Okay, hey y'all. Happy 333rd day of the year, baby. God just had me do a um, a word on 333 a couple days ago, a few days ago. Um, was not a part of this 40 Days of Love um, series that the Lord has me doing for the last 40 days of the year, but he did have me release. He, ha he had me release a word on 333. Um, a few days ago. Um, that was just a word he just put on my heart to release after I had already released the, the word for the that day. Um, that included the, that was a part of the 40 days of love series. Um, but he did have me do a word on that. And he was saying, expect his signs, wonders, and miracles in the coming days. And that day, um, many people had miracles that week. Um, and he was just saying, expect, excuse me, his signs, wonders, and miracles. And I did a word on that. Expect unexpected, you know, phone calls. Just un expect the unexpected is what he was saying. Um, so happy 333rd day of the year. Happy hump day. Happy Wednesday. Happy, happy just being alive today. <laughs> just, it's a happy day. It's a good day, regardless of what you're going through. Um, but today is day eight of the 40 Days of Love series. God has me on here every day for the last 40 days of the year. This started on the 22nd of November. So we are on day eight as of today. And it just happens to be the 333rd day of the year. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for being here. I hope God sent you here if you're a part of this ministry. If not, take me to God and go sit your little happy self at his feet and say, am I supposed to be connected to Nina? Is Nina supposed to be a part of my journey? Because he may tell you no. Not every prophetic voice is connected to everybody. Just like every church is not for everybody. You should be asking God what job to go to, what church to go to, what school to go to, who to call on your cell phone, okay? Because not everybody is connected to you. Um, so you need to ask him with relationships, you know, who you should be connected to. And I'm no different. So take me to God and just ask him. Okay, but if he sent you here, I'm glad to have you here. I love you and I hope that this platform blesses you. I don't like calling you guys my subscribers because I am not a magazine subscription, okay? I am a prophetic voice speaking for the Lord. And I hear people say, sometimes I, I've said subscribers before, but I really don't like that word. Y'all are my brothers and sisters in Christ. And y'all know when we on the live, I talk to y'all like y'all my friends. I be just... Y'all are my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We're family. Um, not all y'all. Some of y'all just be, y'all be getting on my nerves. But I still love you with the love of the Lord. Praise Jesus. Oh, all right. Let's get into this work. Turn down, Nina, for what? I don't know. I didn't have coffee today, y'all. And I, I don't even know if I want coffee, but I feel like it's, yeah, I'm just hype. It's the, the, the caffeine of the Lord. Mm, that natural caffeine okay i should be on a coffee commercial for jesus choose jesus every morning for your wake-up call no that sounds like a judgment commercial never mind that's coming too though judgment is coming it's let me just stay focused y'all because i'm all over the place let's get on with this word because i have a coaching call in like five minutes i have to go over calls and all these things with my coworker um to make sure she stays on point you know what i'm saying so they have your girl of course doing the coaching because i'm just good at coaching people you know it's it's a part of my calling not just ministry but at work okay hold on let me tell her i'm gonna be like 10 minutes late because i know i'm not gonna finish this work in five minutes so she can get on that zoom 10 minutes after two okay it's 155 so i'm gonna give myself 15 minutes to release this word okay one, two, three, go Lord. Okay. So let's get into this word. I woke up this morning before I could even lift my head off the pillow. I heard the Lord speak this loud and clear. Okay. And it was not coming for me because I don't talk like this. Let not this. I don't talk like that. Okay. Um, but I heard the Lord speak very loud and clearly. And what he said was, let not the old be the satisfaction of your perfection. Let not the old be the satisfaction of your perfection. Satisfaction is your, your fulfillment, the fulfillment or um, the fulfillment of your wishes and expectations and desires. Okay, that's what satisfaction is. Okay, it's derived from whatever you feel fulfills these things. 
And then perfection is just, you know, being free from flaws, being in a state that doesn't mean being perfect. He's not speaking of being, you know, perfect to where it's without flaw completely. But basically perfection means to be flawless. Okay, but what he's saying, and I begin to ask, you know, Lord, what do you mean? Let not the old be the satisfaction of your perfection. And what he was saying is don't allow the past people, things, whatever he's talking about for you. Don't allow things and people of the past to determine your your future and how it's going to look to this to determine the satisfaction of your future is what he's saying. Don't allow the past to keep following you and determine how that's perfected. Do not, he said, let not the old be the satisfaction. Don't let the old be what satisfies you, be the satisfaction of your perfection. And I'm gonna break it down in more simpler terms. Some of you are quick to say, man, I just wish I was the same weight as I was in 2019 because then I would be happy and be able to live out my life a certain way. Then I would be able to travel, okay? You're letting the old be the satisfaction of your perfection. So you're basing your past the way you used to look previously. You're basing your past on your current. You're, you're making it seem as if your past is what's going to fulfill you now in order for your life to be perfected. And it's not. You're not going to go back to the, that past you. You're a new you. God is doing a new thing. Some of you are holding on to past relationships and God has already told you the man ain't it. The woman ain't it. But you're still asking him the same questions and you keep thinking about the good times from the past. And God is saying, don't let the good times determine what fulfills you now for where he's taking you. Some of you are saying, if you can just put me back with this person, Lord, and take us back to the happy times, then I would be fulfilled and be able to do what you're calling me to do. No, that is something of the past. Leave it there. He said, let not the old be the satisfaction of your perfection. Let not the old things, people, things, places be what satisfies you in order for you to live out the life that God has for you. That's the perfection. Even with all its flaws, the life God has for you is the perfection he's referring to. He does not promise that we won't go through things. We will. But as long as we have him, it's perfection in every way, shape, or form because all things will work out for our good. If we're walking with him according to our purpose, loving on God, putting him first, all things will work for our good. So our life is perfection when we walk with him. And he's saying, let not the old be the satisfaction of your perfection. You don't have to wait to get the size you were before in order to feel fulfilled and be able to live out the life that God has for you. You don't have to wait until that um, man or that woman from that previous relationship changes and comes back to you for you to be fulfilled and live out your calling in the life God has for you. You don't have to wait until that marriage is restored. And that person comes back for you to be fulfilled and live out the perfected life that God has for you. He's saying, do not let the old determine how you're satisfied right now and how your life is supposed to flow out. He's doing a new thing. Perceive it and receive it. Stop holding on to the things of the past. It's in the past for a reason. To get to the new things and to see what God is doing, you have to come and see. <laughs> you have to follow him and come and see, okay? And he had me um, read this morning um, John 1 verse, on. down. John 1 verses uh, 43 through 46. And this is, I'm going to read it to you guys. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of Moses in the law. And also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, Nathanael said to him. I'm sorry. Let me, I'm going to start from 
the beginning because I'm trying to rush because I have minutes, but let me get this out. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. Okay, the Lord is saying in order for you to see the good that he has for you, you got to come and see. Okay, you got to come and see what he's doing. And coming um, coming means you have to walk forward. When I say come with me, follow me, it means whatever you were doing right now, if I, if I tell you to come and follow me, whatever you're doing, you, you need to drop it and come and follow me where I'm going. That means you're leaving whatever is in your hands right there. Whatever that was in the past, it's staying right there and you're just following me. When Jesus was choosing his disciples, he didn't tell them to go home and pack a bag and follow him. He just said, follow me. He said, follow me. But then you have Philip who went to Nathaniel and he's telling Nathaniel like, hey, like we found Jesus of Nazareth. Nathaniel is like, uh, <laughs> can anything good come from Nazareth? Okay, if you don't know Nazareth back in biblical days, you can consider it what we call the hood or the ghetto, okay? There was poverty, like the people weren't as educated, like it was a lowly town, a lowly place. So Nathaniel is keeping it real. He's like, can anything good come out of Nazareth? how we would have said it in today's age, what could be good over there in the ghetto? Like, <laughs> I used to live over there. What's over there? I know about that that place's reputation. If you're from Miami, there used to be a project called the Poke Beans, okay? <laughs> so if somebody was like, Nina, come over here. I got this real um, this real good opportunity in the Poke Beans. What, what good opportunity is over there in the projects? that you have for me. Cause I know what's going on in the Pokemon project. So uh, what good can come out of that? But don't you know, Ooh, let me not even start preaching. Philip didn't even try to convince Nathaniel. Philip literally just said, come and see. And God is telling you to come and see. He's not here to convince you about who he is, what he can do in your life, the power that he holds. He's not here to convince you of any of that. Come and see. God is saying, leave the past in the past. Yeah, you look good at the age of 19, but you ain't never gonna return to the age of 19. Use what you got right now, okay? You can make this body look better. You can become healthier, but you're never gonna be 19 again. Girl, if I was 19 again, I would snatch him up. You ain't going to be 19 again. You in your 50s. And that's okay. It's beautiful. God has given you life this long. Live it. He's saying stop holding on to the past in order to satisfy the present and live the life that he's calling you to live. You don't need the past to do that. Come follow him. Philip did not try to convince um, Nathaniel of anything. He simply told Nathaniel, come and see. When the Lord Jesus was speaking to the woman at the well, and I laugh at this story all the time because he said, go get your husband and come back. She said, I don't got no husband. He said, you right. You have spoken correctly. You've had five husbands and the one you with ain't your husband, okay? And that's something for some of y'all who always, y'all little Bible thumpers who be commenting, whoever you marry first is your husband. That's who you're supposed to stick with. The devil is a lie. Whoever is your husband is the person God ordained for you to be with. As you can see, he told the woman at the well, she done had five husbands. She done been married five times. And he said, the one you with ain't your husband. Ain't your, he's like, the one that you're with isn't your husband. Translation. You done been with five people. You married them. They had the title of a husband, but that's not who I chose for you. And now you're laying at home shacking with this man and he still ain't your husband. So no, the first person you marry ain't the first person you're supposed to stay or the person you're supposed to stay stuck with. Learn to read deeper into biblical scripture. Who he brings together, let no man separate. Not who we bring together. 
Jesus made that very clearly, but y'all will translate scripture how you want it to fit you because of what you desire and what you want and what you're trying to hold on to. But we're, we're not going to go there. He said, the man you with ain't your husband. And you done had five of them. But guess what she said after that? When she ran into the town to tell the people, she said, come and see a man who told me all about myself. What are you hearing this again? Come and see. She didn't try to convince them. She said, come and see. Come see for yourself. The same thing Philip told Nathaniel. Come and see. The Lord Jesus is telling you to come and see. If you want the satisfaction that you're looking for, he's saying it's not going to come from the past things you're holding on to. That past man, that past woman, that past job, that past location, that past body shape, boo-boo, it's gone. But if you come and see, if you follow him, come and see. He'll show you what he has for you. But to, to follow him, you got to leave everything. He didn't tell them, go pack a bag and follow me. He said, follow me. Oh, Lord, let me go bury my cousin over here. Let the dead bury itself. Anybody who puts their hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom. The Lord is saying, look forward. And these words came from his mouth. I don't speak like this. Let not the old. That kind of sound like KJV. I don't talk like that. I just heard it loud and clear. Let not the old be the satisfaction of your perfection. You don't need the old to satisfy you right now in order for you to walk into this perfected life that God has for you. Just walk. You don't need to wait until this restoration happens in order for you to be satisfied and live your life. Live. You don't have to wait for anything. He's saying, let not the old be the satisfaction of your perfection. The old is not going to satisfy you. Stop holding on to it. Let it go. And come and see. And that's a going thing in the Bible. Come and see. Philip said it to Nathaniel. The woman at the well said it to the people in our town. Jesus said, come and see. When he was, when he shut, huh, let me try to read it real quick. Hold on, y'all. I'm going to read from, ooh, did I pull it up? When John the Baptist saw Jesus walking and John the Baptist was telling his disciples, because John, John the Baptist had his own followers, followers too. And he was telling his disciples, that's Jesus. Like, that's the lamb right there. Like, I, I know that's him or whatever. Um. I'm going to read from John chapter one. I'm going to start at verse 37. It says the two followers heard what John said. So they went after Jesus. Jesus turned. He saw them coming after him. He said to them, what are you looking for? They said, teacher, as in rabbi, you know, Jesus is a teacher. Teacher, where do you live? Jesus said, come and see. <laughs> come and see. It's an ongoing thing. Jesus said, come and see. Okay, he, he didn't tell them where he was living, what he was doing. He said, come and see. In order for you to get what you're asking, you got to come and see what, what he's doing, who he is. And if you break it down, he was really saying, come to me in order to see who I truly am. Come, you got to come to me in order to see who I truly am, in order to see who I am, what I'm doing in your life. You got to come and see. I'm not just going to tell you everything. Come and see. So he said it. Then Philip says it to Nathaniel. Then the woman at the well says it to the people. And they're all, even with Philip and the woman at the well, they're telling them, come and see Jesus. They didn't try to convince these people. Just come and see. If you want to know who he is, what he can do for you, um, who he is in your life, how powerful he is, you got to come and see. I'm not, it's not my job to tell you, come and see. And God is saying, come and see the life that he has for you and stop holding on to the past. Drop everything and come and see. Then you have, look, when we tell Jesus to come and see, we bringing him some dead stuff that he needs to raise up. Okay, it's a different story. When people are telling others, come and see Jesus, they come into life. They come into life abundantly and overflowing. Okay, but when we like Jesus, come see. We need his help with some, okay? We need him to raise dead things. So we like, Jesus, come see. 
We see that with the story of um, Lazarus. <laughs> when the Lord Jesus showed up, he said, where did you bury him? What did the people say? Come and see. <laughs> they were like, come and see. So God, the Lord Jesus is come and see. When you're coming and seeing, when you're coming and seeing, and it's towards Jesus, it's to see life. It's to, man, it's to get the goodness in all forms. But when we telling Jesus to come and see, we need him to raise some dead stuff up. And guess what? He right there. You, you got to even know the right people to tell to come and see. And Jesus was the right person. He said, where did y'all bury Lazarus? They said, come and see. Y'all can read that in scripture yourself. But the Lord is saying, y'all, put the past down. He said, let not the old be the satisfaction of your perfection. Let the old go. Because if you want what he has for you, you have to come and see. And a lot of y'all ain't coming and seeing. Y'all keep picking up the past, holding on to it. God, you said this was my kingdom spouse. No, he didn't. Your desire said that. This is why he tell you to guard your heart for the issues of life flows from it. Your desires has the ability to overtake what God is saying to you. If that man or that woman is what's on the forefront of your heart and not Jesus, those fleshly desires will speak louder than him. And make no mistake, <laughs> the Lord God could be heard. Now, he can speak louder than those things, but you got to listen to this spiritually. Guard your heart for the issues of life flows out of it. If my heart is guarded with Jesus and he's on the forefront, I'm going to have some good issues rolling out. Even the bad issues going to turn good. But if the wrong things are on the forefront of my heart, like a man, a woman, money, the, the wrong things, material things, the every issue that flows out of my life is going to be an issue issue. Nothing good can come from it. But something good can come from Nazareth, okay? Something good could come from Nazareth. It has came from Nazareth and he's trying to get you to see the goodness that he has for you. That's the word, y'all. I got to get to this coaching call because I'm already three minutes later than what I said I would be. Um, but that's the word. He said, let not the old be the satisfaction of your perfection. That is what he spoke to me this morning. That is what I'm giving to you guys. I love you. Have a blessed day. We'll talk soon. Bye.